Hello, today I would like to show you new function generator that I've got, but maybe new is a bad word because I've got this really cheap as a new old stock model, but I believe that might be a 10 years old unit. That's what I would expect. And let's, I believe that this is a up to three megahertz model, so nothing really fancy, but I was looking for a device for just a audio amplifier, so that three megahertz will be just enough for the audio spectrum. Here is a specs for a different model, so let's take a look. I believe this will be ours up to three megahertz. So that will be the, the specs. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, so this is a continuation of the form. We've got some precaution. Okay, we've got a user manual, but I believe we can we can run it without reading that. But if you are interested, you can feel free to pause. If you do not have a user manual, then this is your chance. And that's all. Sadly, there is no date. And this is how this unit looks like. So as you can see, looks more professional than the very cheap one you can get. Right now, there are full digital, like Atmega microcontroller. So we've got our BNC to crocodile clips and let's let's unbag it yeah it have a little feeling of uh, lab equipment because this is not like a fully professional device that I believe is a Chinese device Looks like we've got a counter, maybe it could be used. Yes, we've got the ability to use this as a counter. And we've got a fan. We can change the input voltage. Yeah, it's looking pretty decent. And we've got, of course, a sticker that don't tell you anything but yeah so let's try to rotate that handle okay you have to pull let's make it nice yeah it starts looking very nice and we've got our display very nice the old type here we will be able to adjust the frequency i'm checking if this is a real knob yes this is not a encoder that is just a pot okay we've got the power on off here is the model that we've got and we can once again compare across that's got a really good price so i don't check very much i just see the frequency and yes this is the 16a why i do not see yes 16a so this is our model and here is a and before actually 
powering on. Let's take a look inside how this device looks like. And I'm impressed that this whole enclosure is filled with the electronics. I saw a couple of devices like this that were mimicking the, the lab equipment and actually the all electronics was here and rest was a empty space. But that one looks nice and looks like we've got the Atmel microcontroller and we've got a lot of TTL chips. Are they TTL? Let's just make a quick look. If you could focus, then this will be perfect. I very enjoy that voltage regulator, just connected to the chassis. Very nice, we've got a transformer. Ah uh, yes, this is how it looks like. I'm wondering if they are the voltage reference. I would have to check the I'll try to zoom in. I will check later. So yes, this is how it looks like. So we've got a uh, old school stuff. Let's try to put it back together. Actually, I found something funny. If you take a look here on the PCB, you've got a uh, sealed screen for uh, for the voltage regulator and the the frame for the i believe the similar heatsink like that one but looks like it was not enough so they routed the wires and just stuck it on the chassis so yes that's quite funny and other thing we've got a 2007 actually almost 2000 Eight as a date of manufacturing or or making this uh, PCB project. So yeah, this is quite old stuff. I'm connected with a BNC cable between my oscilloscope and the function generator. What I did, I left it running for like a 30 minutes to allow it to warm up. And we can make a basic test, we can see what's going on. So take a look at the front panel. The first row is uh, buttons for selecting the frequency range multiplier. So here is a 1 Hz, this is a 10 Hz, 100, 1K, 10K, 100 and 1 MHz. And you should go into the range that you are planning to work. So for example, if I would like to have a 1 MHz signal, then I go to that range and I can make an adjustment and go to the 1 Meg frequency. The, this is a main knob for adjusting the frequency. I would add a more turn to this because right now it's got like a five turn. I believe a 10 will be at least something to make it usable. But as you can see, we are going into one megahertz signal. Let's try to see this on the oscilloscope. Yeah, there is uh, something going on the slope, but I'm not sure if this is a problem with the with the with the compensation of the of the cable and it's it's looking pretty pretty nice 
let's take a look at the sine wave and sine wave looks a really good tool we can we can make it a little bit bigger there is something on top but it doesn't look very very scary for our home test application okay as you can see it's working quite nice let's see like a 2 megahertz signal let's go to the 2 meg signal and as you can see i'm trying to get a 2 meg and really tiny movement drop us uh, to the quite large value okay let's hit auto set and as you can see it's working also nice make it bigger look also nice we can make a measurement but of course this is not made for checking the frequency but let me change so here is our one cursor I'm going to go to the another one actually I was on the proper one okay and as you can see here is one cursor here is a second one and we've got a frequency so we are around 2 megahertz so yeah working working good for our home application this is not something that you are going to use for calibrating other instruments I believe we can say that this is okay. Let's check the saw. This is our saw wave pattern, and it's also looking, I would say, look enough. Look good enough. We can magnify this, but I believe you won't be able to to see this right now and yes looks quite nice and we are on the 3.3 megahertz so this is the maximum frequency of this generator and yeah the the square wave doesn't look really nice there's definitely something going on and even if we are on the 3 megahertz it doesn't look that beautiful but yeah this is the the way it is i'm going to connect in a while to the to the output test and i'm going to try this via a probe okay so i compensate the probe and let's try connect it now to see what's going on and this is how it looks like it doesn't look perfect there is definitely something going on and let's see the other thing so we've got a, we've got a attenuator minus 20 dB just in case we would like to make it a little bit lower and here we've got a duty cycle and yes that will be nice for the square wave but as you can see it doesn't work and the reason for that is because we are currently in the like a default mode which is like 50 50 but if we would like to make adjustment we have to pull this knob and now we can start making adjustments so for PWM that will be good let's go lower in the frequency and see how as you can see now it's working nice so I believe we have to just just count that this is the way it is for this I'm in 100 hertz and now it looks good so yeah maybe this is just uh, maybe it's not broken but this is the way 
it worked. That was a very cheap equipment. Okay, so this is the, the duty cycle. We've got the CMOS TTL adjustment, but this, as you can see, also won't work. But the reason this is a TTL output. We've got a offset. Offset should work here. Let me bring our measurement smaller and we can go to the offset. Same thing, we pull the knob. And as you can see, I can move. I can add our DC offset. So yes, working just fine. And here we can adjust the amplitude of the signal. So as you can see, it's working really nice. It says this, let's try, we could measure that because I believe we've got the uh, ability to measure the voltage. One division is uh, five volt. So we can, we can check the peak to peak voltage. So it will be a five. 10, 15, 20 volt peak to peak. Is that true? I believe yes. No, maybe so. Let's grab our TTL output. And let's see what's going on there. I'm gonna hit the auto set. And here should work. And it looks like it's working just fine. Right now, let's go to the 5 volt. Let me move it a little bit. One division is uh, 5 volt. And 10 volt and 15 volt. And that's correspond with the label. I'm not sure if you can see what it's saying. 5 volt up to 15 volt. So definitely in specs so working just fine so here you here you go does it a perfect instrument no does it a really lab equipment no but for the price and testing just a basic analog things i believe it just it will work just fine so here you go Thank you very much for watching, see you next time and bye bye.